Hi guys, welcome to the Fife Property Show. So this week we're going to be talking about hidden potential. The big P word, that makes a fundamental difference. Uh, using the untapped value of your home for selling points with your Fife properties. Um, you know, um, potential is the magic word in property and, and no wonder, um, Andrea, isn't it? It certainly is. And obviously, when we're going around and looking at people's houses, we, we've we got an eye for picking out maybe what someone else can't see. Um, so when we're doing viewings as well, this is all the sort of things that we can potentially, <laughs> if you excuse the pun, point out to people where they can gain, uh, gain space or open up to create more space. So, yeah, that's why it's good that your agent can do viewings for you. Yeah. And and so so you know, absolutely. Um so potential is the big word here. Um and there is ways to maximize that as well. When I talked about to the landlords investors group that will have the private investors group, I says you look, come along to the show, watch the show, engage with the show, ask questions as well. And the reason for that is because as a landlord um an investment strategy, one of the key things here is the potential you can unlock in the property once you buy it in order to increase the value exponentially to what you've actually spent on it to refurb it, if that makes sense. So what, what would happen there is, you know, you'd maybe buy a house for, maybe buy a property for, I'm going to say a house for 60 grand. Where are you going to get a house for 60 grand now? <laughs> you got a flat Not for many 60 places. grand. <laughs> Aye. You got a flat for 60 grand. And then you spend maybe about 10,000 refurbishing it. But essentially, it could probably be valued up around about the 80,000 mark. Um, and a 75% loan to value, that would then release 60,000 and that just so happens to be what you paid for it in the first place. So the only money you've got left in um, once you actually remortgage it is the £10,000 and you want as minimal as possible. So therefore, you take your 60000 and you go and do the same thing again. So this is why I said to the investors group, you know, come along to the show, ask questions. This is the audience's opportunity as well to ask questions about potential and refurbishment and where to actually add maximum value. We're going to discuss this throughout the show anyway, but but it's your opportunity to ask these questions, which are key. And maybe uh, maybe actually in the back of your mind and thinking, should I do this or should I do that? Or should I do something else in order to maximize that gain, in order to maximize that property value? There's also the aspect as well that your property might have increased in value, which allows you to have further options and make further um, further gains in other areas. So, for example, for me, you know, there's no way I'm ever going to pay off my mortgage because I've just had it set for the next two years at 1.74%. It's like, why would I want to do that as an investor if I can make 10 to 15% net return, that's passive, um, over and above the bank's money? So I wouldn't want to take that money and pay off 130000 You know, that would be crazy to do that because I'm making a 12% differential on every single pound I'm borrowing from the bank. Makes absolute sense, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> and that's good. Well, they stay wealthy. <laughs> Interestingly enough, talking on that subject, uh, actually, um, I heard this the other day, and it's maybe not about potential, but um, this is actually quite a good one about investment strategy and about how people uh, don't realise um, the importance of actually creating wealth. Uh, and the, the, the phrase went along the lines of, the difference between wealthy people and people that are not so wealthy are the people that are wealthy, when they get money, they immediately say, right, what am I going to invest it in? And then they go and invest it. And then what they've got left, then they go and spend it. The difference with people that are not wealthy is when they get money, they go and spend it. And then they say with what they've got left, oh, what can I invest that in? See the difference? Yeah. It's that simple, that simple mindset shift. It makes a fundamental difference to how people create wealth and compound over a long period of time. We could talk about compounding wealth today. <laughs> I'm all excited about that. Of course, my vote, you see. I bet that's, that's an accountant for you. <laughs> that's a number cruncher. Most people all know that anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about potential. Okay, so as our homes uh, lives continue to evolve, um, we're examining every corner of how it can offer us more. Um, could the layout be more sociable? Can we create more workspace? Is there scope to add more bedrooms? How can we increase the levels of luxury and light in a property? So one of the unseen parts of the state agency is looking at potential in every home, not just for those that need modernising 
um, and as your selling partner in your move, it's part of our job, and as you said, Andrea, to explore every possibility to widen your audience to get the best possible price. I'm amazed at the amount of people I walk into and they just say, well, it's my house. It's like, you know, it's maybe needing, and they're apologising all the way throughout the property. And I'm sitting going, wow, wow. That's that, you, what you could do with this, what you could do with that, and what you could do here and what you could do there and what someone else can do, not necessarily you, um, opens up that whole field for marketing in order to attract that biggest audience, as we said, to get the best price. Because that's what our job is. Our job is not to sell a house, it's to market a house. Ultimately, the person that buys it, well, I've, that's how we've sold it, but marketing is the key to the strategy to increase the value at the end result in your home. That's what it comes down to, doesn't it? It does. And, you know, I've noticed that when some people, there are two very different types of viewers, and there's viewers that want everything that's perfect. They want everything ticked off on their must-have list when they're going looking for houses. And there are other people that are willing to compromise. And it, it's there that we can step in and help, um, help them see the areas where they can compromise Maybe the house hasn't got garage or hasn't got off-street parking, but there is a potential there to create that. Um, yeah. So that's where we come in. I mean, more and more buyers want a home with a chance to make their mark now or to grow them um, as a family as a family member and grow as their family unit. Um, and we tend to offer more um, to people in property than unexpected ways by taking that interest in how they live. Instead of simply asking how many bedrooms they want, it's more about what is it, what is it it's going to tick their boxes. You know, I, I mean, you know, they can find out how many bedrooms they want on the internet, can't they? They just press a button and they go, it's four bedrooms, it's three bedrooms, it's that price point, it's this price point. But the, the, the internet doesn't understand and computers don't understand what people want out of their lifestyle. That is our job. Um, to get that out of someone and actually produce it. I mean, if, if, I'll be honest, if you are not living in your dream home just now, why are you not talking to us? That's the reality. Because you can, and we could show you how to get that. That's really ultimately how it's done. And a lot of people will walk away from that statement and say, Huck, he's talking rubbish. I've got no chance of doing that. But you don't know what you don't know. That's the key here. And we know that. And it's our job to let you understand that so you can make a decision based on facts, not just what you think at this point in time. You are where you are because of the way you've thought and the decisions you've taken. If you want to change that, you have to speak to someone else, which will take you to that next level. And this is where potential opens up to everything. It opens up to your dream home. That's really what it comes down to. Okay, I'm going. To, I'm on a rant today. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I'm listening. So this week's this week's show is all about the typical opportunities we look for um, when appraising a property for sale. Um, and if you'd like some advice on realising that, you know, f feel free to message us direct or anything like that on this blog afterwards. If you're not watching the show just now, you can ask questions just now if you want as well. But we're going to come on to one of the first key areas here, and and, and essentially that is um, adding rooms. You know, so uh, the most obvious route to increase a home's value is to make it bigger. Um, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, even if you don't extend it yourself, you're likely to achieve a higher price when you come to sell if you've already obtained consent for additional uh, for an addition that requires planning permission. I mean, you know, you, you know yourself, Andrea, the first thing, if you have planning permission on something, you instantly increase the value of it. it, it the typical example is yeah. land, isn't it? It is, yeah. We did that. We managed to... Um, create two plots of land with outline planning consent for, for two house, two uh, detached houses and it was about five times the value as it would have been if we hadn't had planning consent for each plot. Yeah, because essentially land itself, an acre, is what, ten fifteen thousand pound if it's got no not planning even as, Yeah, not even as much as that, I think it's probably just about ten, probably mm -hmm. ten maximum at the moment. So, so increasing that value and getting that planning permission is probably key if you can. And is it is it worth the effort and rigmarole? Because a lot of people look at it and they go to themselves, oh God, I've got to put, submit an application. Where do I start with architects? Because I have, I have to get drawings written up and then I have to, how much do I have to pay? So is that something that would put people off or is it a simple process to do? 
it's a fairly simple process. I mean, you don't actually have to go to an architect. Um, they have a uh, planning, uh, I can't remember what the proper, uh, technicians. And quite often planning technicians will be able to do your basic drawings for you at a much reduced price from, from an architect. And um, you don't you don't even have to get a qualified person as long as your drawings are to scale and you submit all the correct um, mapping data uh, to the planning consent. And of course, the main important thing is what the planning look for is your payment for it. Um, they'll, they'll be able to do it. I mean, I did my own plans. I've done that several times now. Wow. And got them through. OK, so you're trying to tell me I should have stuck in a techie drawing at school. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just sitting there wondering that one day, would I need this for anything, really? And that's all I thought at school when I was on my subjects. But well, today, today is the day that I realised that I should have stuck it at Techie Drawing. I, d I didn't do Techie Drawing, though, Jim. I mean, it's just a case of knowing, getting your angles correct and, you know, having a, a, a scale rule and a, a drawing board. Yeah. So the obvious route when you think about it is just uh, get outline planner permission. Outline planner permission. You don't need to have exact planner permission, do you, no. on anything? No. So outline plan revision is an easy one to go for. Like it's going to be a two bedroom detached house. It's going to go on this pro on this plot, um, and that instantly adds the value to it and could uh, exponentially increase the the market as well for that opportunity. There's loads mm -hmm. of people out there that come to us all the time looking for the ideal plot um, to buy and uh, and 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 build their own house on, isn't it? Um, I don't personally. I don't think it's for the faint hearted because <laughs> I'm like, oh no. No a project like that um, because I, I know that I know the ins and outs of it. But for some people, mm -hmm. it's like oh, this is what I really want to do, and and it is a real challenge. Well, it is because but then you can if you get the exactly the right plot, you can build your dream home exactly the way you want it. You can get the, the room measurements to what you need for your furniture. Um, you know, if you want to have a detached garage or one that's joined on, if you want the potential to extend up the way, eventually you can build the construction to accommodate for that. Yeah, and that takes us nicely on the subject to a side extension. A garage attached to a house can often take uh, a floor on top of the value, the valuable extra bedroom numbers. You know, um, when you have a garage attached to a house, I mean, there is a lot of people. Cooper Mills is probably a classic example of Cooper. The, a lot of people actually take the, the garage and, and convert it into a bedroom, don't they? Yeah, yeah. We, Our previous owners of our house, they actually did that. They converted one of the two garages into another bedroom with um, shower room. So it, it's now, yeah. now a music room, but never mind. <laughs> Not many <laughs> play handles water music in the shower. <laughs> Corner plots are classic examples as well. I mean, look at uh, Tom Morris Drive. You know, um, mm. I mean, Tom Morris Drive, we just put on, it's actually sold now. But I mean, that had huge potential to put a, almost like another house on, extension onto the end of that plot because it was on a corner plot. Um, there's other ones as well that I've noticed before um, that have potential round hill road in St Andrews as well. You know, I, I remember I sold that one, what, 103, 102 possibly, and uh, and that had a huge bit to the side as well. What about Milton Place just now as well in answer to that or in Pitt yeah. and Wayne? You know, Pitt and Weem just now, Milton Place, that's got a huge bit to the side, which could actually add value and add another property onto it. Now, however, this is a five bedroom, two reception already on three levels. So I kind of think, yeah. mm, do we really want to have an extension? I would almost be tempted to build an annex so you could have a more mature family have their have their eldest son or daughter stay there. Um, and, and again, that's potential, isn't it? It is, yeah. Sometimes you do have to watch sometimes, though, because you can get consent for additional living accommodation attached like an annex but the consent is only for a family member to live in it so you would not be able to rent it out to anybody else um because that's not part of your planning conditions because we we did look at a house that was like that when we were moving here and um, we thought it'd be brilliant for our our oldest child to live in but you know, we decided not to go for it because of the restrictions eventually on it how, how would anybody know, though? How would anybody know? They would have to police it, wouldn't they? So they wouldn't, <laughs> would they? I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. The title burdens for most of the ex-local authority houses in St Andrews clearly say that you should, if, the, if, if there's an objection, you can't rent to anybody. You can't use that property for mm -hmm. renting. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't realise that uh, that's the case for every single ex-local authority property in St Andrews almost. Um, and yet nobody enforces it. 
I didn't only, know that. Yeah, well, the only reason I know that is because a solicitor in St Andrews used it to frustrate a sale that we had. <laughs> so I'm taking the opportunity to get them back now, and I'm not going to name the solicitor, but you know who you are. You know who you are. <laughs> Remember Studi <Spirit> Hill Drive? <laughs> um, so uh, going larger still, an empty space to the side can also provide an additional um, living room on the ground floor, perhaps a home office or a studio. It's ni that's nice and popular right now. Um, it may even be possible to create a separate annex, as was said, um, either for a family member or to, as you said, you know, it's, sometimes it's not possible, but to rent as an additional income stream. But nobody's going to know, are they? If you're going to, if you're going to do that, they'll never know any of the different. I, I mean, we've been. I, I'll be honest, and I say I've been to various homes, and they've actually said, "Oh, we we just rent that out the back and close off this front door, and we rent it to people." And I've no doubt that's probably one of the annexes that um, that we're talking about just now. It really yeah. shouldn't be for that, but people do it, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. I mean, people will get trying to get away with whatever they can. Um, and it's just probably unfortunate if you get caught doing it. <laughs> yeah, and as and as people were talking about us as well. <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe shouldn't admit that on camera. <laughs> um, so rear extensions as well are a good opportunity. Uh, again, we come back to Tom Morris Drive recently, uh, Round Hill mm -hmm. Road, and and potentially Milton Place as well. Um, um, the back of the home usually provides most flexibility in terms of design where there's large kitchens, uh, dining kitchens have become a sought after use as sociable, multi-purpose space opening out to the garden itself. It's an, it's easier possibly to get planning permission for out the back as it, as it is to the side, possibly. Would that be the case? Mostly, I mean, you can do an awful lot n more now than you could say 10 years ago um, with permitted development. So you can do that with just a building warrant and not require actual planning consent. But if yeah. it takes up, you know, you've got a certain uh, percentage of your garden ground that you can do up to. But sometimes you need to watch because a lot of people will think that house has been overdeveloped and they've got no mm. garden left. A whopping great house, and it could take a you know about the the von Trapp family of children in it, but there's no garden for them left to play in. Yeah, we so had one yeah, in Balmolo. Balmolo yeah. was the classic example, wasn't it? Where that one we yeah. took over from another agent. We eventually sold it anyway, but but the the objection all the time was really the fact that it was it was far too big for the size of garden. I didn't mm -hmm. see it though. I just I just felt that the garden was more narrower. Um, but it still had a lot of potential, um, excuse the word, um, <laughs> excuse the pun, um, but it had beautiful views out to the back and way across to uh, Lucklaw Hill yeah. um, or Lucklaw Quarry. So it was, uh, you know, I thought it was, I, I didn't see that at all in it. I saw a lot more than what it was. Um, we also look at the possibility, we could also look at the possibility of adding another story to increase the number of bedrooms. Um, so, you know, but the, the rear, um, classic example is Woodburn Terrace as well, two bedroom lower flat. Mm -hmm. Um if you're, uh, when you look at the back and you look right along, you actually see there's other people actually built sunrooms out the back and extensions out the back as well. And that's just a lower apartment. So, you know, there is potential there as well to, to build out the back and build extensions. Um, so I definitely think, I definitely think um, that's probably the easiest one to go for um, in terms of um, uh, possibly adding value without actually doing anything, is to try and get permission um to extend granted um and then that will instantly add value to the property that you have um okay let's talk about lofts and cellars um lofts have a special character that suits various uses uh, particularly with the full staircase installed to make it a new top floor and accessible and an integrated part of your home itself having a some just master suite at the top. Now, I have did this one at Mavis Bank in Buckhaven. So I bought the property many years ago. And they had actually put this makeshift staircase. It was like it was most like a ladder staircase almost. You were you could fall off it if you leant back too much. Um, going up to the upper um, the upper um, attic itself, and they put a master bedroom, and then right next door to it, they put a master on suite. Now that was never compliant. And and I didn't bother about that because all I did was when I bought it, I then spent uh, £6,000 on getting uh, a building warrant and actually getting the job done properly 
um, in order to pass that and put the fire doors in on the second level and on the first level as part of the requirements. So I spent £6,000, and out of that £6,000, I probably added round about £30,000 to the value of that property just because I managed to put a, 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 an ensuite luxury master bedroom upstairs. Um, so there is huge advantage to actually possibly going up into an attic. Um, uh, East Nukes, classic for it, isn't it? The net lofts. It is, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have um, converted their net lofts. They've got proper... They, they had little stairs up to them anyway, so it wasn't such a huge effort to put in stairs. But an amazing amount of space up there and absolutely crying out to be uh, developed um you get a fantastic you could get a decent two two decent rooms up there yeah morning richard how are you today um okay so let's talk about as, that as well i mean net lofts in east nuke um probably classic ones that i remember are goodly crescent you know the, the bungalows so the bungalows and goodly crescent are always right because they were easy to go up into the net loft and them from the stairway in between and uh, create one big master bedroom if you want um, and it does add value because I remember one of them next door uh, without any conversion, I sold for 110. And then the one that had the conversion, we sold for probably 145. So, you know, just going upstairs and you know, tell me there's a there's a what, um, 35,000 pound differential between the two of them. It would cost you to do that job to go upstairs. And um, so I. You know, adding value is an easy opportunity to do, especially in areas where properties are in high demand and you create further space as a result of what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that definitely that sumptuous master suite with the uh, bathroom, the private bathroom, could add a welcome sanctuary, especially away from the kids for a lot of, a lot of people. Um, or a pair of children's bedrooms could be made, perhaps with a shared shower room, Jack and Jill in between. Um, to ease the strain on the main family bathroom, you know, because, um, well, we've quite fought. It's funny, but we've got three bathrooms in our house and our kids all keep coming to ours. And it's like, <laughs> you don't just go to your own. It's like, it's not as if it's anything different than what we've got. Um, and it's like, they always keep coming down to us. I'm a bit, it's maybe the television that's the distraction. <laughs> <laughs> It was well. It was one of my. It was one of my want things to have a television in my bathroom. I mean, it's nothing extravagant. It's like a two hundred quid television. You sink it into the wall, and uh, and you just make sure you've got um, what's it, a uh, fire stick on it, so you can use it, and you could watch uh, uh, Amazon, you could watch um, Netflix or anything like that, in, in the bathroom, it's a waterproof television. So you know, it's it's people will pay like six hundred quid for their tellies and add two hundred quid for one in your bathroom. Um, so it was perfect. It's something I wanted, something that ticked my box. But I think that's what makes everybody want to use our bathroom instead of instead of the, the their own bathroom. Which is quite it's not like you're, you're hoarding all the toilet roll. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a loft, and as we said, a loft can provide the perfect home workspace hidden uh, above busier areas or a studio, perhaps for wellness or a creativity. Um, uh, down below, this is a bit more challenging. The least headline grabbing feature in older homes is usually the cellar. Um, generally regulated to the junk rooms, um, uh, also damp and musky. Um, they could make excellent mu music rooms though, because the soundproofing is below um, the the um, the ground level. Um, so they could be excellent for soundproofing. They could make an excellent cinema room as well, because the darkness is actually perfect for the cinema, um, or a children's play den to keep the living areas um, clear of toys. You know, so that's probably where sellers would be a big, big advantage. Um, but can, can you remember any any properties off the top of your head where where you have um, sellers that you think, all right, okay, that that was that was a good a good conversion. No, I haven't seen one converted, but the one that would have been good for conversion was the one recently in Cellar Dyke, um, West Fourth Street. West Fourth Street. Yeah. yeah, although it was a shared cellar, the ground floor flat had its own stair access to it, um, which would have been right. Excellent. Yeah, that's right. And you could yeah. subdivide that. Um, you could subdivide that because um, you can get in from the outside. They can get in from their own house. So you can subdivide it in between to have a divider. So you've got an extra extra area. And and I said that to a lot of people. It's like it could be for kayaks. It could be for bikes. It could be for anything. Um, or mm -hmm. you could have something else on it. And I think that's maybe the old coal cellar 
So they maybe came on because yeah. uh, a lot of these ones in the East Nuke area um, have the original doors that you the, the coalman came along and they just opened the door and dumped all the yeah. stuff coal into yeah. the cellar. And then they just took it into the house from there. So that, they're ripe for, for that as well. Yeah. And so, uh, Richard says, I have a new property coming on Pitt and Weem. The network converted an extra space is amazing. That's a, uh, just in case there's a, a frenzy here where people are looking <laughs> for property to buy, it's that Richard's got a new property to rent. I'll just qualify that by saying that. So don't, because there's a, there's a frenzy as soon as anything comes onto the market, we have, um, there seems to be everybody <laughs> dives in straight away and starts messaging us. Him on social media about it um yeah so you know what were you going to say andrea i was going to remember about the one um in east weems that had an amazing huge uh cellar space and you could it had a trap door going down from the house but also a door access out the back and i think what puts a lot of people off some cellars is they feel they might just be a bit too restricted you know for yeah. safety and things you know <laughs> put the kids down there and maybe an accident here's me being all negative again paranoid. But Aye. Paranoid. Paranoid. <laughs> like anything you've been watching too many films and tv programs yeah yeah and tapping along the wall to find out where the, the bodies are hidden <laughs> <laughs> and so, so and probably classic sellers as well as properties which are on one level on the front of the house and and they're on two levels when you go to the rear of the house because they're on a they're on a they're on a hill, you mm -hmm. know. So they're they're split level at the at the at the rear, um, well, and, and that's Cooper. where a lot a lot of people. Yeah, exactly right. That's where a lot of them oh, had. Um, yeah. They had yeah, they had sellers and out in uh, Pit Lessey as well. We had ones in Pit Lessey as well out the back going to look over the River Eden um, out the back as well. We had them at Pit Lessey, um, uh, Dowless Place is it? Um, I remember there was one yeah. out there. So they were golden opportunities to convert these um, so-called storage areas into further living accommodation and further um, areas for, um, for uh, you know, a sunroom, possibly, a mm -hmm. barbecue room. Um, all, these, all these things that could add value to the property, it, people don't see as a result of what they're doing. Um, as, as a, and it, it's minimal cost, isn't it? Well, it is because the the structure, the main structure is already there, and you're just having to you're not having to build any more space. As adding on, you're just converting what's there, so it isn't yeah. going to be as, as expensive for materials. We're just thinking there about the the ones in Anstruther at the old uh, hotel as well, Smugglers. And um, they, some of them had. Uh, cellar space that has right. been utilized into the new development of into that the bedrooms into the bedrooms and storage areas and office areas and and yeah. toilets and, and the, i mean they're they're absolutely they're absolutely stunning to the rear at the back of them it's mm -hmm. like they're, they're balustrade the the uh, glass and uh, stainless steel balustrades and they just sit in the sun all day long and overlook the the actual water itself um out to yeah. the fourth i mean it's a it's a glorious but I wonder what the value of these properties would be now. They'd be astronomical oh, no, compared to what they were sold two or three years ago. And yet two or three years ago, we thought to ourselves, wow, I can't believe people are paying the prices like that for them. But now, in hindsight, it's like, your beauty, they got a bargain, you know, when you mm -hmm. look back on it now. It's the same way, you know, I, I spoke about it to a house builder this morning um, about about the development we, we were helping sell in uh, St. Monans. I mean, all these properties have actually been sold off plan are probably worth significantly more just now on paper than they are what they bought them for um, just about two or three months ago. Yeah. So it's it's exponentially the prices of property are going up. Um, you've got to look at opportunities to add value to what you're doing and see that. And, and that's where we see that potential. Um, often as well, you know, when I'll I'll see properties that I'll buy, uh, and I will see that in the potential that wait wait a minute, I could I could actually just convert that, I could do this, and I could add the value to it, and uh, and see instantly where I can get it. So it's having, I suppose, it's having that eye and that understanding when you go around to see a client, you know you've done it before, so you're able to relay that information with a lot of confidence in the fact that well I've done it before and it works. So um, so you didn't have any doubt. And by the way. It's that process and that process and that process and that process that you need to do in order to get that over the line. And uh, you've instantly added that value. Yeah. I think it's probably, if you're thinking of selling your house, it's probably quite wise that if there is potential there that you get some quotations done 
um, you know, for for what the work would likely cost so that you can tell your prospective buyers, well, if you're wanting to add on another room or convert the garage, it's yeah. going to cost X amount. You know, we didn't want to do it, but you might. And, and this is where the challenge comes just now, because um, because some of the house builders or some people are, are, are turning around and saying they're not doing extensions anymore. They're actually just saying we're not doing extensions. Um, we're focusing to, more on new build. Um, so I'm sorry, we can't help you because they're, they're just under pressure. Um, all the mm -hmm. house builders out there as well. I was speaking to one this morning, um, quite a big one in Fife, uh, and and messaging them back and forward. And he was saying it's like the resources, they're scarce. Um, th their biggest concern is material and labour costs uh, uh, going on from here and, and uh, if that's going to escalate in the short term pretty quick because at the end of the day they've agreed to prices with people uh, to, mm -hmm. to buy a house at a certain value um, so therefore that's going to be the challenge to keeping that under control and keeping their costs yeah. under control. Yeah and supplies, you know, timber supplies are, are in short at the moment and the demand is massive for timber um, yeah. you, just, you just can't buy fencing anywhere at the moment because we've tried. Um, we so probably the key, is, the key is, if you're going to get permission on something, get it now and, uh, let's be honest, wait till there's a downturn <laughs> and then say <laughs> you can do it now. And guess what? Yeah. It'll be a fraction of the cost that you're going to pay right now to do it. I did get quoted. Some, I was, I've, I've been looking at a, another investment property um, last week and they were round, and they had taken down the porch at the front of the property, and the guy went, ah, oh, but it'd be easy to just to, to add something onto that and add an additional room. And he and I says, so what do you think that cost will be? He went, £10,000, and I just laughed. <laughs> I just went, you've got no chance of getting something for ten grand now. It's like there's 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 builders just quoting silly figures because they know fine, it's either take it or leave it, because I've got loads of jobs anyway. I, I, yeah. I don't make any difference. And the only way it's going to get me to change from that job to this job is if you pay me higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of what we're experiencing now. Although we've got some good contractors that stick with us and do everything for us. Um, let's talk about open spaces next. So you know, rooms are useful uh, are used very differently now from the traditional uh, separations of living, uh, dining, and cooking, and even working. Um, there's a huge push to have the American style open plan living room, dining, and kitchen. Um, flexible and multi-use purpose are the flow of today's key words. Um, many homes can deliver on without needing or the need to extend. It's all about finding ways to connect um, previously spaces and that are separated and that can be zoned with furniture rather than physical dividers. You know, successful and popular designs include, for example, uh, removing a wall between a hallway and a dining room to accept a bigger table and brighten the once dark corridor, um, merging two living rooms and the front uh, to the back space to suit modern couches and TVs. I mean, some people's couches are astronomical in size. It's like, who are you expecting? Um, you know, a giant. I know. I think a lot of the modern families all expect the whole family to be sitting around the TV watching the TV. But we did that way back in the 70s. You know, we'd all sit down to watch the three channels that were available on TV and we all watched the same thing. Um, but nowadays, I mean, kids tend to have TVs in their bedrooms or they've got their iPads. They're not all wanting to sit in the same room as their parents. So I'm, I'm not a great fan of open plan myself. I prefer in separate rooms, you know, they can, um, you know, contain noise out of the way. Whereas you've got kids at one end playing Monopoly on the table at the dining end of the place. You've got somebody yeah. trying to cook the, the tea at the other end and you've got someone else watching telly on something else. It's very, very noisy. It suits some people's lifestyles, but for me, it doesn't. I like to be able to close off areas. I love the idea about having separate rooms. You know, I know we talk about open spaces and it is the thing of today, but I, I just don't get the fact that you could be cooking your fish in, on the, the, in the kitchen and, and the dining room and living room stinking, you know, and, yeah. or, or fish and, and, and overcooked broccoli, you know, so things like that and cauliflower and, and we're still tripe. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I will never forget that time, probably in my youth, and it sticks with me and haunts me today where my father cooked tripe 
and the whole house stunk and the paper and every single thing. Even my school clothes when I went to school stunk of tripe. Oh yuck! <laughs> oh, it's just and, and 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 I just I will I will never ever touch that. I, I one sniff and it's just like gives you the book. Um, anyway, open spaces. So so. Are, are we a fan or we're not a fan? I don't think we are a fan, are we? I'm not a fan, but then we're of the, the similar generation, Jim. That hey, speak for yourself. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that these open spaces are for the young people that maybe have a lot of friends, um, do a lot of entertaining, and then it is probably good for entertainment space. It's not for me. It's the same with these great big patio windows, you know, that fold back and go out into the garden and let all the flies and the mice in and things like that. But, you know. And that's how, that's how you look at it, because you look at the features, you don't look at the benefits. Um, so yeah. you're, you're, a very, you're a very featured person, whereas a lot of people are benefits person. And what they do is they watch all the programmes like Grand Designs. And they talk about the open aspect to the rear and, and the, the, the bifold doors open and right up and how you can have that wonderful, wonderful garden that you can appreciate for the whole one week of the year. We get the summer. Um, and <laughs> But but it's, it's painting that picture, isn't it? It's painting that picture that people see that. And it's the open plan um, that you see on the television programmes as well. You see all that, how it interacts with each other and how the open plan and the wonderful parties that happen on in between. But then people don't think about the practicalities of the, the fish and when you're cooking it for your tea and, and, and it goes right throughout the house. The washing machine, if you don't have a separate laundry, burling away while you're while you're doing that. So, that, you know, there is, a, there is an argument. Um, I feel like I'm on room 101. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we put all like the places in the bin? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of um, the other things, though, well, if you remember back to older days um, in the older houses, after they started putting toilets inside the house, they very often had the toilet separate from the, the bath and the sink, uh, yeah. and, and which was a fantastic idea because if somebody was in the bath, somebody else could still use the toilet. And, and then... It went into the sort of the era of needing a, a completely separate WC and bathroom, and then somebody thought of the great idea: well, let let's have one in the main bedroom for only the, the 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 owners of the house to use. But I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of this is an increased laziness. I mean. There's nothing like stubbing your toe at two o'clock in the morning, wandering out into the dark hallway, <laughs> trying to get to the Green toilet. Asking, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything more about this. But we, <laughs> we have strict rules about what you can do in what particular po uh, toilet at what particular point and time of day. Put it yes. that way, because it's like yep. there's no way in the middle of the night am I wanting to hear that noise. <laughs> 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 it's like I'm just no into that at all. Eh? Go to the other end of the house. <laughs> Ye are banished, <laughs> especially if you've had tripe <laughs> or an Indian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're, maybe not a fan of, we're maybe not a fan of open spaces, but we do know the work, and it is the buzzword of today, and it is flexible living and lifestyle. I think the best thing about open spaces, though, is um, the way they're all designed now, you could actually easily put a stud up and you can mm -hmm. put a doorway. So you could actually subdivide again. So I understand about, you know, the 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 um, both windows at either end of the big massive lounge and dining room. But it's easy to put a, you know, because they mainly come off the hallway anyway. So it's easy to put a stud in between and you can actually just create two rooms if you really want mm -hmm. to. So you could, and, and the two rooms could give you flexibility. And I think this is what this is all about. It's having that flexibility to be able to see beyond that, um, whether it could be an open space or whether it could be returned from an open space. Uh, and and that's, that, you know, that's our job. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. We paint that picture. Um, ultimately, if that's what somebody wants, that's what we'll deliver and we'll show them how to get it. You know, it's, it's every single time when I walk through a property with someone, I'll talk about the potential and, and I'll listen to what they want to, to, what they are saying and I will reflect that back to them in the way that they want to hear. 
uh, in order to maximize the value let's be honest that's my job <laughs> there, was, there was one of the properties i think it was mackey avenue um and it had i think it had originally been three bedrooms but the the owner had turned one of the bedrooms and opened it up with the lounge with a sort of an archway and blocked up the door from the hallway and that could easily be converted back to be three really good sized bedrooms uh, with a good sized yeah. living room uh, and it wouldn't take much to put it back that way um, but I think we had said once before in another show you would actually get more as a rental property for having the three bedrooms than two bedrooms and uh, a big open plan yeah bedrooms room. bedrooms are a winner every single time uh, defining defining a bedroom as a, a, a room as a bedroom is is fantastic for for the internet um in today's modern way how things work and how search capabilities and engines work um you want to define as many rooms in a house as a bedroom so when you go to put it on the internet it actually matches with maybe a five bedroom rather than a three bedroom and two receptions uh, and the reason for that is because a three bedroom will appear with every single other three bedroom in the search criteria and you will look overpriced whereas if you've got a five bedroom you'll appear with every other five bedroom and you will look more better value less expensive uh, and so your house will be more desirable as a result. And that's a key tip for a lot of people because I've heard a lot of sellers say to me, but it's a dining room. I says, ah, but it can be a bedroom. And let me explain to you why we want to, we want to say it's a dining room, but it can be utilized as a bedroom. And the reason for that is for this reason precisely, because then your house will look better, pr a better price point in that number of bedrooms category than actually in the lesser category where it will look over expensive. Uh, it will look a lot more money you'll have to pay for less accommodation. So it's better to have a five bedroom property than a three bedroom and two receptions. Okay. So yeah. open spaces, we, we are fans, we're not fans, but we know how to market it properly and sell that dream. Um, let's talk about luxury upgrades. Adding the extra sizzle. I mean, this is this is it really, the luxury upgrades. is a surefire way to stand out from the crowd. Um, while increasing comfort um, gives a home a more enjoyable and desirable quality to it. Um, a central cooking island uh, makes a statement straight away and sociable centerpiece in that kitchen that also looks fabulous in photographs as well. Um, I mean, just having, I remember the one up in Fourth View in Kennaway where you just press the wee vent and you know how you have the vent across the back or, or above you, you have the extractor. Mm -hmm. Well, you just press the wee button and the, the extractor comes out from the worktop right behind the, mm -hmm. right behind the hob. And then you've got the Bora hobs as well with Lomond Home, mm -hmm. where the hobs are actually, the extractor's in the middle and, and the, the steam just goes down and, and through mm -hmm. the extractor in the middle. Uh, and, and to me, that's a that's a statement in itself. I mean, incorporating a utility room keeps the laundry out of the main part of the house as well. I mean, that's another one. And repurposing an understair space as a ground floor cloakroom adds value and function in the process, as well as it's an ideal spot um, um, for a glamorous moment. Who <laughs> What does that mean, Jim? <laughs> I am saying nothing. <laughs> Although I was watching this program last night, it was a bit racy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and look at it, enhancing a master bedroom with an ensuite not only injects a seductive slice of indulgence, it also transforms the morning battle of the bathroom and can often be accomplished by repurposing all or part of an adjoining bedroom. You know, that's another easy way for somebody to do that, you know, repurposing an adjoining bedroom and actually just taking a wee bit off in order to make that, that different one. Um, outside uh, garden uh, rooms have become more popular than ever, so that's a luxury. A modern and stylish design makes a perfect home workspace for studio, uh, faster, um, less intrusive, and cost and less costly really than extensions or loft conversions. But you know, if you're putting a low cabin outside, make sure that you're no paying over the earth for it. Um, you know, over the odds, because there's some people out there. I go out and and it's going, I'm going, wow, this is an impressive outside space. And it's like, how much did this cost you? And they're going like, well, it cost me twenty thousand pounds. I went, oh my goodness, you could have built an extension almost for that, um, mm -hmm. and, and that would add a significant value and permanent value to your home. Um, so, I mean, it is a worry. So, if you're going to think about that, please feel free to message us and contact us. We'll give you free advice. It's at the end of the day, we'll deliver the facts for you to make a decision on. 
And it's entirely up to yourself whether you want to do it. But it's good to have someone externally that's got experience and expertise in order to tell you that. Um, if overlooking uh, isn't an issue, a roof terrace, you know, um, East Nook's maybe classic for that, although with some conservation areas you can't do that, um, or an, uh, above an extension or cut into a roof line. Well, we could talk about that at the back of the smugglers. You know, that's where mm -hmm. they did walked out in balconies onto the roof with the extension below and that's what made it a beautiful place for entertaining and relaxing in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, there was that nice one at Colesi as well, remember? Uh, oh, that was beautiful. The, the balcony bit. And then there was another one, one that's just exchanged in Cooper uh, on Well Street. It had a lovely roof terrace. Ah, I remember that one as well. Yeah, that was beautiful as well. Eh? Overlooking the garden. I mean, it just gives you that bit of privacy. Uh, privacy, um, And given it a private outdoor area with a view, particularly uh, wonderful if the home backs onto an open space. You know, if you've got a big, beautiful garden and you're sitting in the sun most of the day because it's almost south facing, then it's it's a golden opportunity to do it. Um, often as well, I've, you know, I've taken people up and to um, uh, St. Monan's and Pitt and Weem and that, and we've talked about, well, we can't do anything about the front because it's a conservation, but i tell you what you can do. To the rear, you can cut about the roof and you can actually make a beautiful area to, to sit in a roof terrace, and that accommodates for the fact that you don't have a garden. Mm -hmm. You've even got the Velux, um, so not name-dropping, but the, yeah, that the is, Velux, they, they are, they are available. And, yeah, it's a double-part window and you push it mm -hmm. out and it's got railings already built into the side. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Not a lot of expense to, to get a really good feature in your house. Mm -hmm. uh, Velux does make uh, really good ones, eh, don't they? Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, inviting light. Um, probably a classic example here. Um, inviting light. Okay, so as a, as a big consideration for buyers, a feel of airiness and natural light is a hugely positive impact on viewings. Uh, thinking of it um, as a daily dose of domestic vitamin D, really that's what it comes down to. Um, I mean, light is, a, light is a big thing, isn't it, when it comes down to that? Um, uh, having that light source and the bright rooms, the bright hallway, uh, the bright kitchen, it makes a fundamental difference. I mean, one of the reasons why I tell a lot of people, remember when you're putting lighting into your house, put white light, actual daylight light, rather than actually the yellow lighting, because it's you, you actually switch the lights on, you don't actually know the lights are on. Yeah, I noticed that, especially in our back office. I keep going to put the light on and it's on already. But <laughs> but no, it is, it's very good and it's much gentler, kinder on your, your eyes as well. Um, one of the things that I was going to say about light, a lot of people are saying, oh, no, my house must, it must have a south-facing back garden because we want to put up a conservatory. And I thought, have you actually thought about putting a conservatory up on a south-facing back garden? You are not going to be able to use it in the summer because it's going to be too hot. Your best place for a conservatory is actually on a north or west facing garden. Uh, yeah. And you can use it all year round then. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it lends itself to that, but uh, I'm a big fan. It's like, don't do the conservatory, do the sunroom. Just pay do the wee bit. You know, do the sunroom because it is a multi-purpose room then and it makes a bit huge difference. So for that extra few thousand pounds, um, just to make sure you've got a roof on it and you've got a stable structure uh, to support it, um, it's it's beneficial. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of conversions as well where people have actually converted the existing uh, conser conservatory and they've changed it and they've actually put the roof on. Um, yeah, you get the lightweight roof tiles for yeah. that. It's quite pricey to do. Um, I We were considering that. We've got a 27-foot long conservatory where we are and it covers the whole it's the whole length of the back of the house yeah. so it takes in two patio doors and the kitchen window and our kitchen is really really dark it was like that when we moved in and mm. you know we keep thinking about you know to get more use out of the conservatory we'll put a solid roof on it and so mm -hmm. the, the house is going to be as dark as anything then there's no way around it <laughs> we're better taking the conservatory down and starting from scratch and putting on a sunroom somewhere that doesn't, um, you know, take away the light from the rest of the house. So, yeah, think carefully before you spend your money on doing things that it's going to give you the, the effect that you really, really want. And take the time and go out and do the research on it and maybe try and go and see some other houses that have had it done to see 
what the impact is. Yeah. I mean, creating or improving routes to the garden can blur the lines between the inside and out and bringing in the daylight along with a sense of space as, as well. I mean, turning a window into French doors from a living room or opening up a dining kitchen um, with a wall of bifold doors onto the patio, as, as we've discussed, uh, there's bonus points for um, skylights overhead as well, and they can dramatically increase light levels. I mean, we've, we've had it in a lot of houses. I mean, the one at St Andrew's Road um, in Crail is a classic example. The, 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 the dining kitchen to the rear doesn't have an outside window, um, but it has, uh, it has roof skylights. Um, and it's yeah. it an adequate amount of light. Actually, it's perfect. Um, it's ideal for that. Um, and that's, that's going to a closing date, isn't it? Yeah, closing yep. date on um, All right, there's an astronomical people um, chasing properties just now. Um, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a boom time for sellers anyway. Put it that way. <laughs> You'd be amazed at how much property values have actually increased in the in the last year. I mean, the, the news and that saying it is seven percent, and I'm just scoffing at that and sitting saying it's no seven percent. It's it's probably double that of anything. Um, mm -hmm. And for some areas, uniquely in Fife. Um, probably like St Andrews, East Newk and Cooper and that, and, and Leaving in particular, um, prices are going up exponentially just now in comparison to the to the to the UK. They're they're rocking, um, and uh, and and we'll talk about that. And to, I'll talk about that tomorrow and tonight uh, tomorrow night show at seven o'clock with my, my weekly roundup. Um, so creating that uh, light and everything. I mean, rear facing bedrooms take on a whole new persona by having the windows drop to the floor um, with a Juliet balcony adding extra uh, an extra romance and enhancing the view over the garden you know that's a that's a big thing as well a lot of people were losing using uh, Juliet balconies to do that um it's a it's a feature isn't it it's a luxury feature isn't it? I would say it is a luxury feature I personally would prefer something I could open up and walk out onto rather than just mm. stand at or sit at um but you know if a house is being built with it and you're not adding it in, then I think it's a nice feature to to go for, and I think it would be a selling point for a lot of people. Um, it's because it, there's not many houses have it. Some more of the new builds have them now, but you know the older houses don't really have them. It's that romantic thing when you actually write in the schedule. It's got a Juliet balcony, and immediately people it it, it, it provides an emotive feeling to the Romeo. To the whole, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. It's, it's the whole thing. It provides an emotive feeling to the whole the whole property description, doesn't it? Um, yeah. And, and, and that's what invites maybe somebody who was just on the edge of deciding yes or no to say, oh, I've got to see this house. Or I've got to I've got to view, I've got to look into it further. I've got to see the video. I've got to look at the drone tour. I've got to, you know, I've got to look at something else. And, and just to, just to, just to quieten that wee voice in my head that says, maybe this is the one for you. Maybe this is the dream home that you were after. Because um, there's often people, I've had people walk into homes and think initially it was maybe not for them and they were just kind of ticking off their box to then go around it and think, this is the perfect house for us. Yeah, I think, I think you know, because more people are working from home at the moment, things, little things like a Juliet balcony or, you know, doors that can open straight up out onto the garden, that's all going to be uh, desirable for people that are going to be working yeah. from home. It will just make them feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, because on a sunny day, you could just open your doors and you could just you could sit and work in, in the shade because you need that yeah. for your laptop. Because um, I've tried it already. You go outside and you've got no chance because you can't <laughs> see the screen. Um, so you need that where you could just open the doors. And that's probably where an, out, an, an outbuilding, you know, would be perfect for that as well because you're indoors, but you're outdoors, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Plus the fact you're separate from your house, so you didn't hear the hoovering going on in the background. You could hear all my wee bits coming out now, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hoovering in the background and the noise and the running up and down stairs and stuff like that. Well, I've you're heard it. Trying, well, you're actually trying to work. <laughs> uh, well, you're actually trying to work. How dare you get in the way while I'm trying to clean the kitchen floor? <laughs> I know, eh? Um, even dark hallways and landings can be brightened by install, uh, in, installing uh, sandblasted glass into the solid and interior doors, allowing the light through without actually losing the privacy in the in the area. Um, you know, that's that's probably my final thoughts on inv inviting the light. So we've covered things like, um, I mean, we've covered the 
the key aspects here, adding the rooms, we've covered the loft and cellar conversions, open spaces, luxury upgrades, inviting the lights. Have you got inviting light and, and using proper daylight rather than the old traditional yellow lighting, which discolors mm -hmm. colors? Um, is a, you know, final words on this, Andrea? Well, the final word, if, if you want a lot of light, don't go for an eco house. Go for a, an, an older style, maybe a Victorian house. They had huge windows in them. Uh, eco houses have small windows to keep the heat in and keep the, you know, the cold out. Yeah. So um, just work out what it is you're looking for and it will be there for you somewhere. Okay, great stuff. I mean, plenty of potential can be realised with straightforward building regulations approval, although we would always advise checking with the local authority to see if any proposals are required um, first, um, if your proposals require anything before seeking plan permission. And there's no point in actually buying a house and then realising you can't actually get the plan permission. So make sure you either do that in advance or you buy subject to plan of permission. Um, even when someone uh, somewhere doesn't fit a buyer's exact criteria today, it may have that special something to make it the right choice to them in the future. And by presenting them with ideas and inspiration, um, even examples of completed nearby projects that we've spoken about in this show, uh, we can help them create the homes of their dreams from a property that they may otherwise have missed. And that's the key here. The hidden potential and a property is the key to possibly having the dream home you always wanted. And my final thoughts is, if you're not living in your dream home, why on earth are you not speaking to us? And that's it for this week, isn't it? Thanks very much for coming on the show, Andrea, and putting your words Thank of you. words in. Excellent advice on things like planning, conditions. I had no idea. Thank goodness you're here. And, and thanks everybody else for listening and watching. If anybody's watching the rerun here, please feel free to comment, message, or like and share, or ask us any questions privately if you so desire. We will always get your messages if you private message us through our social media channels. And uh, until next week, guys, bye-bye um, uh, for now. Bye.